So go to recruitment selection and training of employees. <clears throat> The work of the, of the Human Resources Department, we call them uh, HLD. We call it HLD, Human Resources Department. Mm -hmm. This is, uh, the Human Resources Department is saddled with the responsibility of recruiting and employing workers. So here it's a recruitment as employment, employee selection are the most familiar roles of the Human Resources Department, but there are several other such others, such as training, meeting legal requirements regarding employment, and being responsible for redundancy and dismissal. So for the Human Resources Department, they don't only employ workers, they also train workers. They also ensure that legal requirements that, that needs to do with employment is taken care of. Mm -hmm. they, are, they, are, they are also saddled with the responsibility to dismiss workers and to make workers redundant. They also promote workers. Yes. So these are what they do. So we go to the human resources department now, which is the department that is saddled with the responsibility to recruit, to train, to dismiss workers. So what are their roles? The first one, recruitment and selection. This involves attracting and selecting the best candidates for vacancies that arise. It is the duty of the Human Resources Department to attract the best staff, the best workers, the best employee for the organization. They must ensure that whoever they are bringing in for the vacant position, it's someone that would improve the quality of the organization. That's the first rule. Yes. Wages and salaries. This must attract. This must attract and retain the right people and be sufficiently high to motivate employees. For wages and salaries, they must pay the amount that that fits in to the policy of the company, but it should be enough to motivate workers. So it is their responsibility to know the amount that would motivate workers, and that is what they have to give out to workers. Mm -hmm. Industrial relations. There must be an effective competition between representatives of the management and of the workforce. This may be to resolve grievances and disputes, but also to put forward the ideas and suggestions for improvement. They must also have good communication between workers and their employers. So they must ensure that there's cordial relationship between employers and employees. So they are the ones representing the employers. That's the human resources department. Is it clear? Yes. Training programs. They must also improve the skills of their workers. It is their duty to ensure that workers are given the right training to improve the quality and efficiency of the company. Mm -hmm. Health and safety. The business needs to make sure that it complies with all the laws on health and safety. So it is the role of the human resources department to come up with a structure that is in line in taking care of the health and safety procedures of employees in the organization. Mm -hmm. Redundancy, retrenchment, or dism dismissal. It is the duty of the human resources department to make workers redundant. So they have to, they have to, uh, how do we put it? They have to measure, not only measure, they have to access, uh, they have to assess workers' performance before they make them redundant. Yes. So it's their role, it's their duty to check the assessment of workers before they know those that are, those that can be made redundant. And if workers have to be dismissed, it has to come through the human resources department. Is it clear? Yeah. That was the permission of the manager, right? Or the CEO. What? After the permission of the director, right? Or no? No, the manager, okay. the department, you know, if if there's redundancy, mm -hmm. redundancy will come from your department, from the department. So the departmental head. Yes. So the departmental head would suggest the employees that could be made redundant to the human resources department. It is not the role of the departmental head to make workers redundant. It's, go, it's just going to su su uh, suggest or make names or bring out names that can be made with names of people that they feel are surplus of requirements and they will forward it to the human resources department. Oh, so it is through the human resources department, you get your letter of redundancy or you get your letter of dismissal. And uh -huh. if you want to get your letter of promotion, you get it through the human resources so department. From top to down. Yeah, from top to down. So it's from the head, the yeah. and then yes. yeah, the, the decision will be made. Okay. Yeah, so now recruitment and selection. When I talk about recruitment and selection, they said businesses need to start the process of recruitment and selection when. So what brings about recruitment? Recruitment is employing workers. 
to a vacant position. That is what recruitment is about. Yes. Employing potential workers to a, to a vacant position. So what are the reasons why we have recruitment and selection? One, an employee leaves their job and they need to be replaced. Mm -hmm. As soon as an employee leaves, there's a vacant position that has to be, that has to be filled. Yes. This is one of the reasons why there's recruitment. The second one, it's a new business starting up and needs employees. If a business is starting up newly, you would need workers, then you have to employ workers. Yes. Recruitment has to take place. The third one, it is a successful business and wants to expand by employing more people. So if the business is trying to expand, it also needs new workers. You cannot use the same numbers of workers. It will be inadequate of your business to continue with the same numbers of workers. So you need to increase the numbers of workers. Yes. So the recruitment process gives the business an opportunity to assess the role of employees, the nature of their jobs, and future workforce requirements. In a large business, this process of recruiting and selecting staff is usually undertaken by the human resources department. Small businesses do not recruit enough people to make it worthwhile having a separate human resources department. Often the managers who will be supervising the employee will deal with recruitment for their department. For example, in a hotel, a restaurant manager might recruit the employees who serve customers in the restaurants. The more important the job is to be the, to the business, the more technical and the senior the position, the more careful and time consuming the recruitment and selection process will be. So for large, there's a difference between large business recruitment and small business recruitment. Mm -hmm. For large businesses, they need there are different units, and each unit will have its own responsibility. They might have human resources department. So for large businesses, the human resources department takes charge of recruitment. But for small businesses like sole traders, they don't have enough resources or financial capability to have a separate department yes. for human resources. So it might be the role of the manager to take charge of recruitment. That is the point they are making here. Yeah. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. So we have the recruitment process. We have the vacancy arises. Well, that is when there's a position available. There's, there's an opening, there's a vacant position. That is the first stage. Do you get it? Yes. Then we have job analysis, the recruitment process. We have job analysis and description. For job analysis and description, here we're talking about, are you there? Yeah. So the first stage of recruitment process is to carry out a job analysis, to study the tasks and activities to be carried out by the new employee. So there's a vacant position. So when there's a vacant position, it is the role of the human resources department to analyze what function, what responsibility, does that role entails? That is when you will be able to know that takes us to what we call job description. Do you get it? Yes. So as soon as job analysis is done, then we go to job description. So the job description is the functions of that individual that will be employed to that position. That is job description. So here they said, once the job has been analyzed, a job description will be produced. A job description has several functions. One. It is given to the applicant for the job so they know exactly what the, jo the job entails. With job description, you'll be able to know the kind of job you'll be taking, the yes. kind of function, the kind of role you'll be performing in that organization. Yes. Two, it will allow job specification to be drawn up to see if the applicant match up to the job so that the people with the right skills will be employed. As soon as there's job description, there will be specific specification, which talks about the skills needed, the qualification needed, the expertise needed to carry out that job. That is person specification or job specification is the same. Then the third one is once someone has been employed, it can show whether they are carrying out the job effectively. If a dispute occurs about the employee starts, the job specification can be referred to in order to settle these questions. So <clears throat> with job description and person specification, as soon as you get the job, you wouldn't have any other choice than to perform according to what your job description is. And you'll be able to perform to what your job description is because you have the quality and the skills to perform it. You have taken that job because you said yes, that you have the skills. You, you have the skills to carry on with that job. So if you don't do the job well, they will refer to your skill, they will refer you back to your job description and the person specification. This is what you are supposed to do. And you told us you can do it. Why are you not doing it? So these are the roles of job description. Is it clear? Is it clear, please? Yes. So let's see. Job description can often also contain information about the conditions of employment. So part of job description, just go down. Part of job description is about the conditions of employment, where you're going to talk about your salary, 
the hours of work, the staff welfare. Training that will be offered. You will know the kind of training that you needed mm -hmm. to carry on the job. Maybe it's off the job training, on the job training, or induction. Yes. Then it will also tell you about the opportunities for promotion. Oh, if you are able to get this done, if you are able to complete this task, if you are able to spend three years here or two years, you'll be promoted. You will know all the things in your job description. <clears throat> Therefore, job specification. They said once the job decision has been drawn up, the qualification, I talked about it already. Yeah. For job specification, we're talking about your qualification, the experience you have, your expertise, mm -hmm. the kind of characteristics, the kind of features you must possess to be able to do the job. That's job specification. Yes. Then we have details of job. For the, yeah, okay. Well, okay, it's job specification. And um, we have activity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's where we stop, please. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The video is also taking this. Single day. Uh, oh.